So uh, one thing we uh, presented at a poster spotlight at San Antonio 2022 was an analysis of subgroups enrolled in the Bileave study. So Bileave looked at alpelisib in combination with different endocrine partners in patients who had all had disease progression on a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor given with an endocrine therapy. And the reason for this was that Solar One, the phase three registration trial for alpelisib, the alpha-specific PI3 kinase inhibitor, uh, was done in a time when we didn't have CDK4-6 inhibitors in most places in the world. So just a tiny percentage of patients were exposed to CDK4-6 inhibitors. As you know, the benefit from alpelisib is seen in patients who have uh, pic 3 ca mutations, a specific set that were used in the trial. And so we use that same criteria for by leave. Patients were eligible who had the pic 3 ca mutations. We've already shown and published that in patients who progressed on an AI plus a CDK4-6 inhibitor, that alpelisib added to fulvestrant in this population seemed to still improve progression-free survival compared to a real-world uh, database from the Flatiron database. In cohort B, patients received an aromatase inhibitor with a CDK4 with uh, alpelisib because they'd progressed on fulvestrant and a CDK4-6 inhibitor, and most of them had had previous progression on an AI. So this is a group of patients where you would expect to have a relatively shorter PFS, but it was quite good in bileave, a little shorter than what we saw in Solar one So then we wanted to understand what happened in those two cohorts in the patients who, because we have these really long ranges for progression free survival. So what we wanted to do is understand who's out on that outer end, you know, who are the patients who have very long or, uh, you know, extremely long uh, progression free survival on uh, or time to progression on alpelisib plus an endocrine partner. So we defined uh, long as greater than 12 months and very long as greater than 18 months. And we looked at some of this data in solar one as well. And it's actually really interesting. I mean, if you have endocrine sensitive disease, you can stay on this second or third line endocrine therapy for much longer than 18 months. In these population of patients, we identified a subgroup of patients, um, almost a quarter, who were on for more than 12 months. And then about 16% who were on for more than 18 months. And in that group, you know, it was out to 24.8 months, 25 months. Really amazing. So what were the criteria that uh, seemed to correlate with that long-term response? And it was really low disease burden. So bone-only disease, you know, low, uh, C, you know, you can't find the PIK3CA mutation in cell-free DNA, um, and long-term response to prior endocrine therapy. So really interesting, but it gives us a lot of, I think, information about which patients benefit from these combination therapies. And we can use these criteria also to understand the benefit of additional targeted agents moving forward.